We're almost live. Going live soon. All right. Back over to Zoom. How's everybody doing? Great. Awesome. What's up, Dab Dabin? How you doing, brother? Good. Just got two people over the last two days to take some more leads in two different okay. places. Jeff, thank you very much for that copy that you put in Lead Generated. It works like a charm. You bet, man. Glad to hear it. What copy? What worked about it? What would you tweak? Um. Well, I guess so. I mainly, like I mentioned last week, is that I'm mainly in junk removal. So it's like in the beginning, asking about the cert, like, oh, do you guys do junk removal? And for some of these guys, it's like the service name is like right in to like they say junk removal in their name. So just trying to think of a different approach than just saying like, oh, do you guys do? And then you know, like where you have the redacted service part. So right. it's like. Um, I don't know. I haven't really thought of a softer entrance than like just the crash in of like, hey, I'm looking to refer out some of this stuff, but just coming up with some creative stories and uh, keeping track of them. But, you know, it's been working just fine. So. Awesome. That's really cool. Glad to hear it. Yeah. So some wins, some nice early wins. Hey, do, you have one, do you have one in the Vegas area there? Um, in the southwest side for enterprise, but not Vegas as a whole. I bought a site that is um, needs a lot of work, but it's in that junk removal in Vegas. So mm -hmm. um, maybe you could maybe we could tag team someone if you get a client. I haven't really put effort into it yet, so it, like I oh, said, yeah, I've got a I've got a guy taking leads already, and there's I have another a, junk I have removal operation there. They have, it's, it's actually legit. Like they have, I think it's the wife or the sister or something takes the calls, you know. So they have somebody actually taking calls for them, and then they seem to do an awesome job. It's just the leads are so few and far between; it's really hard to monetize it right now. Maybe we're feeding the same guy because this guy has his wife answering the phone. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. That uh -oh. might be common. <laughs> That's not unique for that niche, you know. Yeah. That's why I was. Excited. I actually have a few of those too, and I have mothers and sisters and people ask like that answering the phones too. So, and not in Las Vegas, so it happens all over. Absolutely. How are you doing, Shannon? Good. Yeah. Recovering from my uh, dealing with my fear of the snaps issues, but uh, I'm working on it. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, obviously a, a big shakeup. Um, we're not going to really go deep into that just to keep our distance from that subject. But, yeah. um, you know, just uh, one thing I will say that regardless of, of um, whether you're using snaps or whatever program you're using, one piece, uh, a, and this is part of what I want to cover today. I've written down some notes. I always kind of have like a little um, idea of what I want to cover on these calls. And one of the things I want to cover on this call tonight, we're going to go through some more wins, but before that, or after that, um, the whole hosting and website stuff. So regardless of what platform you're using, I think it's very important that you guys purchase your domains from like a main provider. Okay. Because all the work that we do is going to be associated with our domain, right? We're, we spend all this time building up backlinks and all this stuff. So the domain is really what gains a lot of value. Regardless, if you can, it's easy to move your website from one host to another, right? Like we had, uh, like I mentioned just a few minutes ago, we purchased several times, we purchased blocks of sites from, from other people. And a lot of these times they're on Weebly and we, all of our stuff is on WordPress. Just that's what I prefer to work with. I don't like paying a monthly fee myself for uh, on a per site basis. So, you know, with 130 sites, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, with over like close to 400 sites, I'm paying $130 a month to WordPress. And this is part of what I'm gonna go over. Um, I would never want um, my domains to be purchased through something that wasn't like GoDaddy or Namecheap or one of these ones that, that are just like a well-known authority um, domain registrar, right? So I'm not pointing any fingers. There's, there's a lot of them out there that I don't know. And um, I, I just, I just kind of stay away from them personally. So um, I, I think it's, uh, it's all the work and money that we're doing is, is kind of attached to that domain. And I want to make sure that that's at somewhere where um, I'm never going to have any questions, right? Like GoDaddy is one of the most reputable names in the business. So, you know, it's, it's really easy to point these domains at whatever different web hosts through it. And once you pay for it, 
you have the support of the, the registrar, right? These are multi-million dollar companies, um, you know, sometimes in the tens of millions of dollars and, and they have, you know, tons of support agents standing by ready to help you. So if you have any issues getting it set up with hosting or anything like that, it's, it's not gonna be a problem. Most of these people have 24 hour support, right? With, um, you know, I know that GoDaddy has really good support. They have a phone number you call, you can talk to. Um, they have Americans working out of Phoenix that are standing by ready to help you. So um, just a caveat uh, of something that, that I think is important. Okay, so uh, with that being said, let's go, let's talk about some wins. Shannon, do you have any wins this week? You're muted. Hold on, I will ask you, there yeah. you go. Any wins? Um, I took most of last week off because I haven't seen my family in a year and I did, so that was good. But I also in the last three weeks have hired, I think I'm, I have seven VAs now and so it was, nice to take the week off and have people still working and doing it, which is brand new to me. So I guess that's kind of a win being able to uh, take a week off and have other, have sites being built and back leaks being built. That's what it's all about, right? Would not happen a year ago. Right. So, so I kind of consider that cool. a win. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a huge win. I think that's where we want to go is when we can not be working, we can be doing the whole reason we're building this business is so that we can do the things we want. For most of us, or a lot of us, that's going to be mean, meaning spending time with our friends and family, right? So yep. um, to actually be experiencing that while your business is moving forward is kind of the culmination of uh, work for a long time, right? So yes. I think that certainly is a win, even though if it's not like um, qualifiable, right, where we can put a number right. on it or anything like that, I think right. it's, that's awesome. That's, yep. that's super cool. Um, I had a win myself, similar. Um, you know, I used to play a lot of golf. And I haven't played in 10 years and I took Sunday and I went and played golf with uh, my cousin. We had a great time. You know, I'm trying to do more of this myself. I spent so, so much time working and it's, uh, you know, I've, I've been mentioning this, my own personal journey, um, just trying to like separate from this. You know, we have, we have a successful business. It's not necessary for me to always be working. So um, had a great time. And, you know, I just think that for me is like a little personal development, um, a step in the right direction. So um, let's hear, let's hear for some other people. Who's got some wins? Who's create, who's done something cool in the last week? I have one on my side. Okay. Well, yeah, can, can, can we, can we say half wins? Half wins? Yeah. yeah it's a half win. You know, half win for Laura, you, that might be two wins for somebody else. Well, maybe at least it's a, it's a first step, I would say. So, uh, we've been, uh, we've been discussing and, uh, that I have some issues with sales. Okay. Yep. Uh, and I had, a, I had a website which was definitely a low-hanging fruit uh, that started to produce leads. In fact, it started to produce leads as soon as I was able to have a GMB hub. And I'm the only one in the area on that niche with a GMB. So I, I had a huge issue to find someone to take my leads. I looked at all, everyone on Google, everyone on Yellow Pages, Yelp, uh, everything. And I was not finding uh, I, I kept pushing and I looked at uh, something similar to Craigslist and I found some people that were putting some, some hats over there. So I managed to contact them uh, and then one of them uh, wanted, to, uh, wanted to take them. Uh, and yesterday I had my first closing speech with someone with, with an actual flat fee here. That's amazing. Before I, I did percentage based and it's not for me at all because I'm not able to follow things properly uh, with them. So it's not closed yet, okay? Because the guy, um, there was a couple of objections here that are some I managed to push back on, but still on the pricing side, uh, he needed to crunch a little bit his numbers, but he's super interested in what I'm bringing. Uh, and I think as uh, Jeff was saying, we have gold in our hands when we discuss with those guys. And I definitely bring in 60% of his business right now. So, which is fairly cool. So that's my half win. Maybe next week it would be a full win. I, I think that's a full win, man. You know, everybody is in different spots in this. And when you can kind of tackle something and, and start to get a rep in on something that you're uncomfortable with, um, that's that's a huge step in the right direction. Because this, this first closing call is going to be... Um, dramatically more challenging and scary than the second one and the third one. 
So uh, I think just making the decision that this is what you're going to do is is huge, right? And, and you did that with this. So like we don't always need to be results based because each step that we take is moving us towards something, right? So like just because you didn't close this guy yet, and it sounds like you probably will if you're giving him this much of a percentage of your business. This this uh, is a is a big step in the right direction. It's like somebody who starts working out where uh, maybe they need they needed to exercise for years and years, and they've been scared to go to the gym and they go the first time. Like that's a huge deal. That's a lot easier than going the second time and so on. Right? Just making that decision of like, hey, I'm going to attack this and I'm going to tackle it, man. So, I think um, like. I'm, I'm super happy for you, man, as you can probably see. I think I think it's awesome, Laurent. So congrats on that. Keep doing these these reps. Um, just make sure, just keep getting getting in the game. The more you do this, the easier it gets. I, I was the same way. When I first started, I was like, I was really uncomfortable with it. I wasn't confident. And it's just got easier and easier as, I, as I've done it over the years. So um, you can expect that to happen for you as well. I'm, I'm sure it will. Yeah, I think the gate is open now. Uh, and I did cross uh, the, the fear aspect and i will get to it definitely it's awesome. gonna be fun excellent excellent man well I, I look forward to more of these it looks like we've got some wins in the chat we got um matthew laura quinte um he got his first ever trial client i think that's pretty amazing right um we know for a lot of us um you know i was doing a coaching call with my buddy paul um who who hasn't been through any kind of lead generation training before on sunday and um, I explained that, like, he's like, hey, I, I need an overview of the whole process. And um, I put in there, um, find a trial client as one of the steps. And then the next step I put is like, find a different trial client, because that's typically what's going to happen, right? Like, I, I don't know what our average is, Jeff, but it seems like we normally go through maybe two or three at least before we find a good one, right? Yeah, it just depends niche and location. I mean... You know, it's just, it's prospecting 101, right? It's a numbers game. Sometimes you hit go right off the mark. Other times you have to run through a few contractors to get the right one on board. But overall, I think it's just, just continuously putting people into the pipeline and then the cream rises to the, the top and you get a little bit better, you know, not perfect at identifying them. Sometimes you make mistakes again, like we've talked about before, but just, just keep on jamming. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so we have uh, Bobby... Bobby Melu is returned and signed back up for Lead Generated. Happy to have you back. Um, we, I, I, uh, I would love to hear where you are in your business. It's been a little while from I've heard since I've heard from you, so I'd love to catch up and get an overview. It looks like Mick got over 200 applications for his job posting and found someone who's skilled in conversion AI and Surfer SEO hiring in the process. Josh Gibbs has a win, a $500 commission. Um, he talked about $700 a month. Now all my GMBs in this have dropped overnight. Ranking calls stopped coming. Yeah, I've heard a lot of this with um, with people uh, getting hit pretty hard by this la last update. Um, you know, I don't know what determines why someone gets hit harder than someone else. There you go, buddy. Um, but, you know, I think that we just kind of stay with it. There, there's certain things that Google's never going to go away from. They're always going to value the links from other sites. They're always going to value reviews and, and citations and, and content. So um, it's, you know, and, and I also have noticed that with a lot of these updates, there's like, it seems like it goes down for a little while and it comes back up, right? So I don't want to give you false hope, but your new location in the rankings might not be your permanent location is, uh, it, 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 or it may be, I don't know. But, um, you know, I, I think that a lot of times when these roll out, there's a, there's a lot of that dancing that's going on there and, and, and bouncing around. All right. Uh, I made the decision to take this call outside because it felt really cool, but now I'm sweating like a dog out here. It's pretty hot and muggy. I am still in Dayton, Ohio. We are about to depart on our first adventure. We're going to be heading to the East Coast. Hopefully, um, my man Jeff and I will be meeting up. I think we're going to be hitting uh, New York City first. I'm going to have a form to fill out for you guys. I don't have it ready yet, but I'm going to post it in the group. Um, I would love to meet as many of you guys as possible. And uh, I know that Jeff will be joining us for a lot of these, um, for a lot of these destinations. So you might get a two for one special, but I'm going to have a form. If anyone is interested in meeting up, if we get enough people. We could probably do some sort of group mastermind. Um, if there's enough people like within a, a driving distance. So 
I'll put a form together. And as we travel through these different areas, we will um, we will kind of reach out to people and, and see if it makes sense for us to, to meet up. So um, that's coming soon. Um, let's hear some more wins. Anybody else have any more wins to share? I, I had a quick win, Patrick, and it kind of goes off like what you were saying about just kind of getting the rep in with Laurent and, and moving forward. It's like, we had a, I have a trial client that I'm actually shaking the tree really hard to get them to cough up some dough. I've been giving them random leads. They're kind of lower end compared to what we really want to do with them. There's a lot of big potential with them. So I've given them way more leeway than we normally would, but they did pitch me a referral um, a few days ago. And it turns out this guy works in a pretty uh, pretty uh, lucrative niche. He's a sales guy. He does about five million a year in the niche, and he has the uh, ability to grow. And he gets double commission for the leads that he brings in. And it's kind of like a national company that he works under. So he, with the double commission chunk that he can take off his own leads, he can actually undercut the price of the the main the main company and sell the deals for cheaper than they could get from the main company. So there's I mean, he could go, we could take him from five to 10 million, you know? So these are the kind of deals that I think you kind of like evolve into and you can start to get, you know, build up to like, I really want to do like some kind of seven figure deal. Like we have clients that are paying us over six figures a year and that's amazing, but I want to, whatever that means, I don't even know what it means yet. I'm just kind of manifesting it into my field. Like I want to do a seven figure deal. Like we could take this guy, you know, to where he wants to go and, and, and maybe double his business. It could be amazing. I mean, these are amazing opportunities that you can, you know, apply the skill set to that you can get out of the, you know, five hundred dollar trees sites or fifteen hundred dollar concrete sites or whatever you're doing, and just just think bigger and just as you build that skill set and that muscle, like like we're talking about, then you can get into these deals with confidence. And yes, I do have the gold in my hand, and I can make these bigger deals happen. And so that's where my mindset is: like, how do I get you know bigger and bigger deals? That's awesome. That's awesome, Jeff. It's uh, it certainly takes some time for us to get to to the spot where we can just speak to these people and know that we can deliver, right? And it's 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 like some of you guys hearing that might think this is intimidating or not ready for it. And you know, there it wasn't long ago when we weren't ready either. So I, I know he's only got a little bit of time, but we have we have a special guest. I think some of you guys saw him in the chat. So um, our good buddy Shiv has jumped onto the call. So I don't know if you want to say hello. One of the things I don't want to do here is we're not going to grill Shiv on, uh, he's welcome to say if he wants, but we're not going to grill Shiv on where he's been and what he's been up to. I know that he's been traveling around quite a bit. Um, I've tried to meet up with him a couple of times and at the last minute I ha I've had to cancel. But, um, you know, uh, for those of you guys that have been in for a while, Shiv is one of the people that is certainly the most responsible for the growth of the, of the JK group. I don't, I don't think... Um, you know, anyone, any, anyone can deny that um, really, really talented person. Um, I think most of you guys probably know him. Shiv, you want to say hello, buddy? You want to jump on here? It's been a yeah. while we've seen your face. There he is. Look at that guy. He's still got the mustache. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's, um, you, can you hear me? Yeah. I just yep. want to make sure. Cool. All right. Sweet. Yeah. Well, it's funny. I never, I, I was not anticipating showing my face, but obviously we, we talked and you said to jump in. I, how could I say no? Um, but yeah, I mean, things have been great. And I think if anything, you know, in the last six months of me kind of being kind of doing my own thing um, and not a part of the JK group, I, I will definitely say like, it's such a testament to just the power of leads, right? Like, you know, just the other day, I got a $4,000 a month attorney and, you know, it, it, you really think about how crazy that sounds, which is, this was, you know, I still, it's a small part of what I do. Um, I'm not putting that many hours into it. And just to show that you can get business to someone $4,000 a month or $48,000 a year is like, yeah, that's, that's basically what the average American makes. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's to me, like, I just am obsessed with, um, the space. And I don't think, you know, whether I'm in one group or the other, I, I think like leads to me are, are, I just think that's super fascinating that, um, you know, by basically getting customers to, to someone and making them money, like you can make a lot of money too, but it's good seeing you, dude. I don't know where you're at. It's very, uh, I like the background. Yeah. It, I'm in Ohio. Um, um, hanging out nice. at a, uh, a family, family member's house here. And um, yeah, it's really, really chill and relaxing out here. There's deer and all kinds of stuff that run by here. So 
you know, when you have like GMBs getting suspended or your clients aren't paying you and then you look outside and there's like a little squirrel running by or a deer, everything just kind of gets like, everything's cool. Like we don't have to be upset about it. Right. It's going to be fun. <laughs> and it's cool That's awesome. Like, you've got, you're right. You're kind of hitting on something with picking up this client. Like, whether you're fully focused on this or not, this is like an evergreen business model, right? So like this has been going on for a long time, right? Home Advisor has been around and there's been, you know, um, other people teach, teaching this skill. So to, it doesn't really matter what, what, if you're in one group or another group, like the skills of this, and it goes way beyond just like online lead generation, right? There's, there's people doing it with, with um, billboards and all, all kinds of different strategies. Personally, I, I believe, and I think you'll agree, Shiv, that this online space from a return on investment is the best one that I know about. But, you know, there's so many, like, how creative can you be with this, right? And just to be able to pick up something for what the average American makes, like, and it doesn't sound like you put a lot of effort into the landing of the client, right? No, it was actually a referral from another website that only pays me $500 a month. So it kind of shows you, like, you know, literally my blue collar tow truck website um, got me the $4,000 a month attorney website. So um, it's, yeah, it was, it was just a casual thing. And um, it just got brought up randomly from one of my clients who basically said, Hey, um, he had a family member who was an attorney and needed, needed some leads and said, would, would I be willing to entertain it? And I told him, I, I actually didn't really want, want to do it. Um, so I said, you know, honestly, I, I don't do anything for less than four grand a month. So I highly doubt, I highly doubt like it would be of interest. And he goes and tells, you know, the attorney and the attorney's like, yeah, let's do it. And I got a, I literally got a wire like the next day. It was like, what's your wire info? Um, so to me, it was totally by accident, but obviously, obviously, you know, not to jump the gun here. That's because of you, you and me have been doing this for a long time. So that's right. kind of the, I, I get to sit here, you know, six years later and say, for doing something as long as I have and as aggressively as I have, now it's, you know, even on less of, a, of an effort, um, you know, you can, you can kind of see, I, I'm still getting paid, let's call it, um, from the result of six years of right. kind of right. building myself in the space and being known as someone who, who understands a skill, I guess, you know, I, I wouldn't say I mastered the skill. I feel like we're always mastering and getting better, but someone who I would say is pretty competent at the space. Um, and so, and I think that's exciting for everyone here. Like, you know, there's always growth. Um, there's no such thing of, like Patrick said, it, it's be invested and double down on the space that what we do is really cool. Um, and it doesn't matter how you acquire that knowledge or how you learn it or how you go about it. Just know that if you can make someone um, business, like you'll always be able to do well in life. And um, that's kind of my belief system. My belief system is I always want to create situations where people win. Um, and I almost want to feel underpaid always. That's always been my philosophy. Um, it's been that way for six years. I've always been underpaid. Um, and I hope that never stops. <laughs> I hope I'm always underpaid because I can go to bed at night feeling good about what I do. And I know a lot of people in this chat, it's cool seeing some of the names because I recognize them. I know a lot of us think the same way, which is, you know, we want to, we want to feel guilt free about how we make a living. And, and it's cool. It's cool seeing everyone here. And I don't know, I got a little bit of time. I got to hop off in a little bit, but I don't know, Patrick, if you want to do, if anyone wants to do Q and A, if it's about lead gen or business or sales, uh, especially sales I run sales teams. I don't know if you want to do one of those for like 10 minutes. Yeah, let's do it, man. Uh, let's, let's just, let's cool. just kind of run with it. And, and, um, yeah, does it, anyone have any questions? Like, like I said, Shiv is you, you kind of speak on what you want, but let's try to keep the questions related to like lead generation or, or sales or, or something business related and not like yeah. Shiv's yeah. personal life or any of that stuff about. Oh, what, I agree. I agree. Yeah. I'm not here. There's no, there's no value. And it goes back to, you know, I, the only reason why I wanted to hop on is if there's something, if someone has a problem in their business or lead gen, or they have a question about sales, I would love to give insight. I'm not, we're not here to, to talk about stuff. That's not going to actually benefit anyone listening to this. This is, you know, so to me, I want to, if you guys have any questions in your business, um, any questions about the websites you're building or obviously lead generated itself, uh, it's actually been a, a useful tool. I've been starting to get more and more invested in it um, and, and using it for, especially for these bigger clients that, that I have. Um, I'm, hey, I'm more than happy to acknowledge there's a ton of people in the Facebook chat that are 
you know, rattle off. Shiv got me into the business and everything, and I, I'm included in that group. So I think there's a lot of gratitude for for you and everything that you've done in the past of, you know, how you've helped yeah. people. That's that's awesome. The the sad part is I don't I don't I'm only looking at the Zoom chat. Is there is that where all the questions are happening in the Facebook chat? Uh, I'll if there's any questions in the Facebook chat, I'll I'll tee you up with that. But the, you know you can only see the yeah. Zoom chat. But, yeah, it's uh, good seeing uh, you, Jeff. Yeah, well, by the way. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, sorry. What were you gonna say? I was just gonna say it's nice seeing it's nice seeing Jeff as well. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. So. Um, Bobby Malo has got a question for you, Shiv. If you were starting all over again, how would you prospect? Yeah, so if I was starting all over again, um, what I would do different uh, would definitely be, um, this is a little bit of a strange answer, but I would, I would be running, I'd be building like a one-page site, running Google AdWords to it, sending the free trial to every business in the area, and I'd be on the phone talking to as many business owners, trying to show them from the paid ad that I got the leads and I can give them results in advance. And then once I get the client, I would build the organic site. So I would do things a little bit, bad, uh, a little bit different. I'd kind of use the paid ad to send the lead over, kind of prove myself um, and then kind of try to get the money um, and then build the site. So that way it's like I have a client ready to go. And I'm not building a site, waiting for it to rank and then getting, you know, then going and giving a free lead and like wasting, you know, I guess not wasting, but like I compress that time. I try to get a client first as, as close to possible, but that's also because I have so much experience now. I feel confident that I can do that where if you told me six years ago, I probably wouldn't be able to pull that off. Um, so that's what I would do. I'd be trying to figure out ways to get the business owner first or as close to first as possible in the process. Right. So I just want to point out guys, cause like this, what you just said there is what I would do with my current skill set. But with a lot of these people, what I've been teaching them over the last few months is like, if you're starting out with this and you don't have the confidence, it's much easier to make the sale. If you've got like, uh, if you've got something that, that is, is coming in. Right. And I think Shiv um, also has a, pretty legitimate skill set with Google ads, right? Like the, like for some of you guys starting out that, that don't understand the Google ads platform, that might be a struggling point, right? I know that they've, they've tried to make it easy, but um, so you gotta, you gotta like also- If you're excluding ads. Up. Yeah. I mean, I can give, I can give an example too, if we're, if we're excluding the ads, because like I said, it's, it's a little bit of a tricky answer because it's like, if I would start all over again, it's like, well, we're from the experience I have and like, you know, just how many years I've been doing this. It's, it is very different because I mean, you know, I could, even you can say this, Patrick, like we've done this so long that we could probably go and on day one, if I had to start over on an Island, I would go right to the most, the richest, most successful business owner and close, you know, a 10, 20, $30,000 a month client. But that's only because I have the six years of street cred to prove it. Right. So it's a bad answer for like, if you're brand new in this or you, you haven't really built this business to its fullest potential or, or gotten all the skills to, to be kind of um, I guess, you know, someone who a business owner can trust on, on first impression. Um, what I would probably say is, you know, just be never, never like build one site at a time would be kind of my second answer would be like, I definitely did a lot of that in the beginning. I'd wait for one project and a second project and I'd go very slow and very like methodical. And I was definitely raised with that engineering, um, you know, kind of, you know, my parents, very analytical, educational upgrading of do one thing at a time. And I, I would have, I would have built a lot of more sites up front. Um, I would have just had more, more projects. I would be juggling, you know, at least five sites at a time, something like that. Um, and then the biggest thing that everyone here, I mean, I've said it twice, basically, but um, referrals, I, I don't think anyone in, in this group asks for referrals enough, um, incentivizes referrals enough. Do you give any of your paid clients who already are paying you money? Are you giving them any incentive to give you referrals? Are you giving them discounts? Are you giving them commission? Um, if you guys already have clients, second money is the most underrated thing in this business. And I, I look at definitely the last six months, just going back to all the people who are paying me and asking how we can do more business. And I've straight up tripled my business just doing that. I'm just asking, literally just asking people who already paid me. So that'd be another thing that I look I back on the six years and go, yeah. yeah, why did I do that? Why did I not go to the people who already love, trust, respect, um, you know, do business with me? If they already trust me, 
they like me, I'm making the money and they're doing commerce with me. They're giving me money every month. Why wouldn't I ask them, how do we do more business? Um, by far the stupidest thing I've done until lately. <laughs> um, so I would say that would be my advice. I think that's, I think that's amazing advice. And, um, you know, one of the things also is look, when you get a referral, your chances of closing this person are so much higher than when you try to just connect with somebody who has no clue who you are, especially in the industry that we're in, where they're used to getting calls, you know, several times a day from people saying they can do what we can actually do. So uh, I, I know that for us, uh, our business has grown quite a bit only on referrals. Like we, I do almost no prospecting, which is not maybe what you guys should be doing, right? That's just where we are with our business now is that we have 60 or 70 clients. And if we get one to two referrals a year from them, then we're getting like one to two a week, which is a lot for us to keep up with, right? So we're not going out trying to, to prospect, but that referral network makes it very easy to close, right? When, when somebody calls you up and says, hey, um, you know, I got your number from so-and-so and they said that 95% of their business is coming from you and they, they're they running a multi-million dollar business. Like, what do I have to say to not close this person, right? I've, I've got to like insult them or something, right? There, there's almost no chance I'm not going to close this person. So if you guys, just like our clients, when they go out and they do a good job, they have created an asset with that person that they've done the work for. They, they should be acquiring a review from this person. And if you guys have clients that you've been successful, successful with, um, you're leaving money on the table and asking for, for additional business because business owners know other business owners. There's just like that. That's the, that's the circle that they hang out in, right? They're, they're, they're operating in that they're, they're hiring other companies they are doing all sorts of stuff. Um, so I think, I think that's really valuable insight that is, um, overlooked way too often. So I know for some of you guys that are starting out, you don't have your first client that's not applicable yet, but as you build this, keep that in your back pocket, and for those of you guys that have existing books of business, and like it's a great, it's a it's a great opportunity. Um, you can see Dan Brown here saying he picked up a thousand a month SEO and rented a Legion for three hundred dollars a month. That's a solid win. I think Dan Brown actually shared nice last week or two weeks ago. He shared um, it was a referral from like across the hall, and I think it turned into like so inside some office building. He has a client, and across the hall they overheard him speaking, and then I think maybe the his current client put in a good word. And then it ended up being like a, a fifteen or twenty thousand dollar commission check that he received from this from this new client, which is essentially a referral. So that's for one month, guys. So um, huge, huge opportunity for those of you guys that have success with existing clients. All right. So um, I know Shiv, somebody asked you to go over your your uh, Zapier prospecting strategy. I don't know. Um, what... Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So. Um... My strategy was, it's it was in it was in a in a video I made a, a while ago, and I'm it, it's funny because I do so many things with Zapier. I mean that could be almost like a whole a whole like weekly call because <laughs> I I'm, I'm like a Zapier nut. Um, I have zaps that are like 80 steps long, but basically what I would do is I would go on Fiverr.com. Um, so I have, this is assuming you have a Legion site, it's ranked, it's already getting calls. So let's say you have a Legion site, it's ranked, it's already getting, let's say 50 calls a month and you need a client on it. What I would do is I go to fiverr.com. I would figure out a way to buy, um, there's like these people who they will give you the email addresses, phone numbers, and info of every business in a location and city in a niche. Um, so I would go and say, you know, pay five, 10 bucks and say, Hey, in, Asheville, North Carolina. I want a spreadsheet of every tow truck company that exists and all as much info as they can get. And I'd get, you know, a day later, 24 hours later, I'd get a spreadsheet from Fiverr. And then I would put all of that info in a zap that would make sure that the phone call info, the recordings, the, um, the email forms, anything like that would go to every single business on that list. So I'd be prospecting and running a trial to like 30 businesses at one time instead of doing it one by one. And then I would set, I, I, they did get an email every time saying like, Hey, these are getting sent to everyone. If you want them exclusively contact me with my phone number. So it was just a strategy to give them to everyone. And then that way, what the businesses who were interested could bid and reach out to me. And that way they're coming to me and I'm not 
prospecting to them. Um, and I can find kind of my best client who's willing to pay me and do business. And because they know I'm willing to send it to everyone, um, they, there's tends to be a little bit more urgency and more scarcity for them to like close the deal with me right away. So that, that was the technique. That's awesome. Yeah. It, it also really positions you as like your the, the, that lack of desperation, just that as you saw with the attorney where you're like, Hey, um, this amount. And I'm not, you know, I'm not like just this kind of lack of interest. Like that framing is also going on here where it's like, they're coming to you and they realize that you're the person that's making the choice. It's not like, Hey, please take my leads, please. I need someone to do this. It's like, Hey, we're going to make a selection from this list of people. So um, I, I love it, man. Super, super good strategy. I, I, I must've missed that the first time around. I could have used that a few years ago. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's even, even for me, like, I'm happy someone brought it up because I haven't used it in a little bit. And now I, I remember that strategy and I did do really well with it. And so, yeah, I mean, even, you know, even us, we, we taught, we do this for six years and it's like, you can still get rusty. You can still forget the things that worked. Um, and that's why I love, honestly, what I love so much about, uh, I guess, life in general is that you're never you're never good enough. Like there's no period where you're like, I got this. I mastered it. Like I still forget basic things. I've still done, really dumb mistakes on my sites to this day. Um, and you know, it's, so I just, I just love that, that process that like, it's not like you and I are sitting here, you know, on any type of high horse, like, Oh, we've mastered this. Like, no, we, we make just as much of the stupid mistakes that everyone who, who is a beginner does. Um, it just, we just done so much of it that, you know, we have enough things gone right as well. Um, but yeah, I've made, I made plenty of mistakes even, even recently, which is super, super great. Um, yeah, absolutely. But, it, it's yeah. Each one is a, is a great opportunity to learn. And, you know, I, I know that, that we make a lot of mistakes and I've tried my best to share some of these mistakes with you guys on our weekly calls. They continue to go on. It's, you, you know, you don't need to beat yourself up over this. It's, it's an opportunity to learn. So, you know, the, the, the way this learning process goes is when you first start off, your goal is to just kind of like understand the fundamentals right? And just apply those and get success with those. And then after you've had some success, then you can start to put point, like put in your own personal tweaks on this and see what works and what doesn't. And that kind of like leads you towards mastery. And I don't know that mastery is ever something that you necessarily achieve, but they're like a lot of this stuff gets, gets easier. Like you, you can try this, like, like Shiv has the ability for myself, if I was going to start over, I would feel fine walking into a business like I, I know a lot of people aren't comfortable cold call but just like walking into a business and striking up a conversation and explaining what we do i've explained it so many times that now it comes off smooth and it comes off confident so like it doesn't mean that I'm, it's going to be perfect and I, I guarantee you when i leave that meeting uh there's going to be the opportunity for me to improve you know when i was playing poker for a living um one of the things that they always talk about is like um you you, you cannot play mistake free poker like anything that is less than playing the hand perfectly is a mistake, right? So what the best players are doing is they're looking when they're winning, they're looking when they're winning for the opportunities where they could have done things better. And I encourage you guys to do the same. So just because you close somebody, like don't waste the opportunity to learn from that, right? Just because the site's ranking and you're beating everybody else, like let's, let's find a way to keep moving it forward because you're going to get tossed into more competitive markets or other situations where it may not go as smoothly. And if you can be learning from your losses and learning from your wins, then you're going to be, you know, this, you're going to accelerate the, the learning process um, for this business. And, and honestly, um, you know, that's something I took away from poker and that's something that I've applied to my entire life. And it's just like, it's, it's made things better. So um, it's great to pat ourselves on the back, but let's not like, you know, get too heavy handed with that and think that like, Hey, were they like kings of the universe because we've had like a certain amount of success. I, I know that, um, you know, we're, we're running uh, two, two big businesses now. And, um, you know, I, I still feel like I'm in that beginner's mind where I'm like trying to understand different things and not just assuming that, that I know, um, that I know everything. That's just never the case. And, and I think that attitude has really resonated with my team. Um, I think maybe it's resonated with a lot of you guys as well, where it's like, um, just, just kind of like assuming that, that there's, there's so much more to learn. And, you know, it's, there, there's an adage, like the more, the more, you know, the more you realize you don't know. Right. I think keeping that in your, in your mind, while you go through this, um, it can help when you're in the beginning too, 
where it's like frustrating and to hear it from somebody that's been in it for, for, for two people that have been in it now for more than six years, right? Shiv and I, um, yep. it's, it's, uh, like it, it, it can, it can let you know that like, you know, as a beginner, like you don't have to feel so bad because like we go through that same stuff, right? We still have, we still have those moments where we, we make these mistakes. Oh yeah. 100%. And, um, I still, you know, to this day, um, you know, I still mess up on closing clients or I still, you know, price things like I have, I'm so used to, and I'm so conditioned, um, to price things as such, like almost like kind of lower than what I could price at. Um, and so like definitely there's times where, you know, I have a site that's making my client $30,000 a month and I'm asking for, you know, 500 bucks a month still <laughs> going, wait a minute, like, hold on. You know, and so, um, yeah, you, you just kind of like, you just kind of learn and, and you adapt and you change and it's never, you're never perfect. And there's definitely times when, you know, I go, darn, you know, if I could redo that, I'd redo it this way. But what I do is I just take notes and I'll write, I, I do journal or write notes down and especially on the notes app on the iPhone and I'll keep a reminder of that. And the next time I do a call or I build a website, I'll pull up that note and just go, okay, remember, these are the mistakes you made last time. So that's the, that's the key is like, I'm only in a race with myself. Um, and I really don't care. I mean, there's people, I mean, you, you'll drive yourself crazy if you, if you keep trying to, you know, um, you know, if you keep trying to compare, because there's people my age, you know, technically there's, there's probably someone in San Francisco right now is, you know, 25 and sold their company for $10 billion or something. Right. So you're never, you're never at a point of like, being the best it, to me is just can I look at myself in the mirror every day and feel like I'm getting better as a person in all dimensions so for me it's like you know health um uh, wealth of money um and then you know like spirituality um there's just kind of different components in my life that and relationships so I just try to make sure like where am I at and every month I just look at kind of do an inventory of my values and, and my different parts of my life and say, okay, which part is kind of lacking or needs watering. And then I will say, okay, which part is maybe in abundance and can be uh, less focused on. So uh, we can only focus on one thing at a time. And I think that's another big misconception too. It's like, well, everyone here, it's like, you know, this idea that you're going to run everything perfectly in your life is false. Um, it's about prioritization and figuring out, okay, what are the couple battles um, I'm going to do this month. So um, that's definitely been, you know, a big part for me in my growth. And, you know, actually I've learned a lot of stuff from you and actually a lot of it. And I want to give a huge amount of uh, thanks and gratitude to Jeff, who has spent a lot of time with me on these other parts of my life and helped me a lot. So, you know, I go to Jeff seeking a lot of advice because I think he has um, gone leaps and bounds in certain areas that I, I don't hold a candle to. So I learned from Jeff a lot. And I learned from Patrick in different areas. And I, 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 and I feel like I can say both of you have learned from me in different areas. So Absolutely. Yeah. it's, yeah. Um, I want to make sure too, I'm getting that. Is there any other questions? I just want to make sure I get to them because I am short, a little short on time on my side. Um, well, uh, Matthew Laura Quinte says, what approach do you prefer many niches in one city or a few niches in many cities? Um, <laughs> so I actually think the the correct answer is probably, the correct answer is probably one niche in many cities only from, from like, if you wanted to look at it from like a mastery standpoint where you can really get to know the niche, get really into the niche, the business, get obsessed in that way. You're like a master or, or an, or an expert. But for me personally, I'd be lying if that's how I built my business. Even to this day, I build different niches, different cities. And my rationale is, to me, it's a different reasoning for me. It's, I want to, I, it's almost like you don't know what you don't know. And I feel like if sometimes what happens to people is they stick to one thing and they never go a little bit out of it. And you, I want to find out that, Oh, window tinting is the greatest niche of all time. Or, Oh, this city and this niche is that did really well. And that didn't. So I like to experiment. I like to switch things up. I also like talking to different types of business owners. I'm just like a very curious, fascinated person. Um, and I'm kind of like, I'm almost like a, um, I don't know what the word is like a nomad or I, I kind of like things going from place to place, thing to thing. Um, and so it kind of cures my shiny object syndrome. So that's why I have different niches in different cities. So I think the right answer is probably stick to one niche and, and go deep in it and go to different locations. Um, but 
I personally do not do that because <laughs> yeah. I just say, I just have a lot more excitement out of life, um, dealing with different people, different backgrounds, different businesses. So everybody's yeah. playing different games here, right? Like Shiv's yeah. game is, um, Shiv's in and has been in, in a spot where, um, you know, he's, he's pretty financially secure and, uh, you know, it's, there's certain advantages to both of these. Some of the advantages that I've experienced from being mostly in one niche. And, you know, I would probably say that 75% of my, my sites are in one niche and then 25% are in a bunch of other niches. So some, some of the benefits that I've seen personally from being in one niche is I know the pain points. I know exactly the topics that I want to cover the keywords. I know the types of leads that people are going to want. The reason that we get so many referrals is because the niche that we're in is a tight, it's a tight group, right? So these people go to conferences together. They talk, they're in like Facebook groups together. So when someone asks for a referral and we've got 25 clients who are members of this Facebook group and we've like, you know, blown them away with our business, then like the stuff starts to stack up and we've kind of got like a blueprint when we need to start a new site. We're like, okay, like these are the ones that are going to convert the most. So we start building in those. Our content writers are educated on these. There's certain backlink sites that, that we know to go get. And now we've got like so many sites in this niche that we can just give ourselves backlinks from some of our other sites. Right. So, um, but like, like Shiv, Shiv said, it gets somewhat boring if you're doing the same thing. And it could be that you, you're putting like all your ducks in one basket and you know maybe there's maybe there's maybe there's a better niche out there. So I think it's good to experiment. But like Shiv said, also there's there's certainly some benefits to niching down, right? So well, you actually not not to not to cut you off, but you kind of said it right there. Um, you're kind of it's the eighty twenty rule, right? You said it yourself, like seventy five twenty five. So seventy five percent of your in, your lead gen income comes from one type of niche. Twenty five is spread out. I mean, there's a happy medium in there for people. I think in the beginning, like especially if you're brand new, I think tasting things is very important. Try a few different things, experiment, like see, see, maybe you realize you get along really well with one type of business owner versus another. I bet you with Patrick, what happened was he started to do well in a niche, started to do more and realize like, wow, I'm really like crushing this. And then started to, you know, double, triple, quadruple down. Um, for me, it's definitely, I've not, I haven't had that like epiphany of like, oh, wow, this one niche, I'm like, it's so superior to another. It just, happenstance for me so i just kind of been all over the place but um i think you gotta you gotta trial and error feel things out and if you feel like oh i'm catching momentum on this one thing always when you have momentum ride that momentum i mean i have other things in my life and patrick knows like where things go well and i just i just dive i put almost all my eggs in that basket but you do got to ask yourself on the same to side of things is on one end mastery is important. On the other end, if Patrick built his entire business in the taxi niche and Uber comes out, that really sucks for Patrick's business, doesn't it? So it's, it's you know, you, you want to have enough strength and expertise, but you also want to think a little bit strategically and think the world is a very evolving, changing place. I would hate to build my entire business in horses and then the car gets invented. Right. So uh, that's kind of how I guess I think about things today, which is I, you know, now today I'm a little bit more willing to diversify. But in the beginning, you know, I think focus is key. Yeah. I so, think, and you absolutely no. don't want to dive like head first into a niche until you've had some success with that. I've mentioned this on previous calls is you want to kind of complete a full cycle, maybe a few full cycles before you decide that, like, I'm going to invest a lot of money into this. Right. You're not going to just like um, go and put put all your money into one stock, right? If if you don't know anything about that, and you're just getting started, right? You you're going to diversify. Unless you, unless you know what you're talking about, and and you know that's why, like to me, um, I'm very. I think we're very much the same, which is like in, in poker. When you know you have a good hand, you put all the chips on the table, right? And so to me, it's I play the game, I diversify, I do different niches, but I promise you, if I if I see if I see an opportunity that's out of this world, great. If I see a niche that, oh my God, I, I can't believe this niche is that lucrative, that amazing. I'm ranking that quick. No one's in it. It's zero competition. You bet I would, I would go and do what Patrick did and, and go all in, you know, go, or go more in than not. So I'm um, just feel it out. There's no right or wrong answer. And um, I do want to 
yeah, so sorry for it. I, I basically didn't answer the question. I was just like, I still I clearly but my answer is I don't know. <laughs> um, it's, I, I, it's up to you. Creating the right contacts around the question is like giving giving people insight into your decision making process on this. Some of these questions don't have a clean answer, right? People are going to have different success. I've seen it. I would say it's probably a two to three to one ratio of the people that I've seen that have had a lot of success. A lot of those people are niched down versus the, the ones that that are not. The the ones that are in that like. 50 to 100K a month category seem like more often than not they've niched down. But that being said, there's still a ton of people that haven't. And there's a lot of those people have, are in multiple niches like, like myself. Like we're in really strong in one niche. And now we're like adding in like a second and a third niche that we're going to hit pretty hard as well. So like we've, some of this stuff has changed for us too, where, you know, when, when we first started, the goal was to try to bring money in, right? And, and to be able to support ourselves and, and do it in a passive way. And at some point you start thinking about the niches in like the, the, the niche that we're really niched down in. I would never want to own a business in that niche. Like, I, I just like, I don't want to operate in that space and have to do that. Right. But there's other ones that, that I'm like, I could own this business, right? For instance, like dumpster rental or container rental, like, right. that, like that, that rental type business. So like I could potentially buy those containers or dumpsters and then own them. And then instead of taking like 10%, maybe I pay people when I take 85%, right? And I can automate that business. So as you go through this, things change. And that's why there's no clean answer. And everybody's got different personality types. And like- Can I uh, chime in? Generic, yeah. anytime. Oh, oh, shit. Sorry for the swearing. <laughs> it's okay. I, that's exciting. Hi, Jim. How are you? you? Have I... like the, are you guys sitting in the same- are you I know. I, same I, bed? I was... <laughs> <laughs> this is actually my dining area so this oh, that, that is that, that is yeah. funny i didn't realize how similar this is yeah i That's just good. noticed that um i wanted to chime in on the on the niche question too so another thing to think about with the niches either you go one niche or you do multiple niches if you strategically do it where you look at niches that kind of intertwine a little bit now you can kind of monetize um the niches where this let's just say you mentioned yeah i know exactly what you're talking about yeah, so let's just say dumpster rental, right? Dumpster rental goes hand in hand with junk removal or the demolition person, right? So maybe you can connect, go into those three niches and then they kind of kind of eat off each other. And that one lead can be converted because they might need, you know, dumpster rental. They also just remodel their house or whatnot, and now you can sell the lead. So that's another way to look I, at it too, if you if you look at multiple niches. That that's great insight. In fact, um, I had a really, really interesting part of this where I went to buy a car and um, next door was the Nissan dealership. And obviously in the process of buying the car, you know, it comes down to like, you know, how to buy it and stuff. And they're just very curious, like, what do I do? And, um, and in that process, I tell them what I do. And they're like, oh, like, would you be willing to do marketing for us? So I actually have a meeting with a Nissan dealership. And one of the angles that I came up with was to take all my tow truck websites and when people get their cars towed, send them an email when they fill out the form or send them a text message on the number through the tracking number, um, send them a text message every time they get off the phone with the tow truck saying, hey, um, you know, you get some kind of incentive to get a new car at Nissan or Nissan will pay you a really big trade-in for the car. So like I can double dip on my towing site. I can make money from a towing client, but then maybe I take that lead if, you know, it's towing their car, maybe the car's broken and they need a new car. And maybe that's the angle. So I think there's so many more angles on a website, like you said, or, you know, you have two sites that work together where you can be in multiple niches, but they're all related. They're all in the same industry. So that's very, very clever. Really good point. Yeah. I hope everything's good. We'll, we'll catch up after. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. I'm like, uh, there's Chevy. I haven't seen him in a while. It was nice to see you. Um, yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> and it's funny when I did, I, I hopped on late. Um, I was doing some stuff and I realized the same thing, Pat, about my background, my, my, my booth here. I'm like, wait, Shiv got the same uh, headboard as I do. I'm watching, I'm watching really closely now that I've seen this headboard to see if like your shoulder pops on while Shiv's talking or... <laughs> No, we're in two different locations. And I mean, uh, Shiv, you're, you're still in the West Coast, right? 
I'm, I'm gonna have no comment on where I'm at, but, oh, but. Gotcha. <laughs> I know that he's been, uh, I, I like, I, I'm literally traveling everywhere. That's why okay. I've been okay. all yeah. over the place. You okay, know? cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. 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 So, uh, I, but, I, I don't want to take Patrick to like, um, you know, I, I feel bad that like I just hopped on your call and I'm just like no, hijacking it. People are, yeah. people are super hyped to see you. You know, there's, there's clearly a lot of love for, for certain people in this group. And I think you've been, um, somebody that's been, that's been like, um, it's been a big miss, right. From, from having your knowledge and expertise and experience and your viewpoints, you know, Shiv is somebody that I've spent a lot of time with. And I'll tell you, um, like Shiv and Caleb, and there's a few people, I feel like every time they speak, I just want to, I just want to shut up and and listen. And because I learn, you know, it's, it's just this great opportunity to learn something. So um, you, hijack the call as much as necessary whenever whenever you like i think the people are are happy to have you here and and you know um hear things from a different angle than than me every week yeah i i appreciate it it's it's cool it's 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 really nice seeing faces that i recognize it's it's been a it's been a minute but um yeah let's let's do um rapid fire is there any i i want to the worst part is i'm on my phone and i think if i go to the facebook post it will kick me off the video um, so I don't know if you want to, um, I know there's some questions I've got in the it Zoom open chat. Right yeah. 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 So you guys, uh, let's, I- any questions that you guys want to ask, throw them in there. You've got somebody here that has had a tremendous amount of success in the space and is, you kind of got his ear for a limited time period. So I'm looking back through, looking for additional questions. Jeff, if, if you see any in the Zoom chat, throw them in there. Um, yeah. If, if you could, if. If you guys see any questions in the Facebook group, um, maybe you could post in the Zoom chat and I'll start with the Zoom chat questions. I'm just going to answer them in the Zoom chat. So if anyone's in the Zoom chat and you see something on the Facebook post, just paste it in and say the name of the person who asked it. Just help me out there. Um, but basically, Kyle asked, what's the most effective strategies for just starting out and building a lead gen business? Um, and, you know, it's, it's the same things that it's just the same process. It's a simple process. Um, in terms of strategies, I think, you know, they boil it down to the simplest answer treat your website like like it's like the golden rule like treat others the way you want to be treated like when you build a legion website have a put your head in the mind let's say you're building a tow truck website put your head in the mind of someone who's stranded on the freeway who's searching for that tow truck website if that website when they click on it does not match what you would want to see and the images you'd want to see the call to action you want to see the text you'd want to see if you were that customer who needed a tow truck your site's screwed up. So to me, I'm always like customer oriented. And I think if you can think about your entire business in the eyes of your end user, which is the end user is not your business owner, by the way, it's not the tree care guy or the limo guy. It's the actual person who's going to Google search. I need a limo in Santa Ana, California, or I need a tow truck in Asheville, North Carolina, or I need, you know, whatever it may be. So just that would, I would say, if you, as long as you have that uh, frame of mind, just same thing with links and backlinks, if your backlink does not make sense to you as a human being, why do you think Google is, is going to somehow accept it long-term? They might accept it today, but six years from now, if you as a human look at it and go, why is this Chinese website, you know, linking to my, you know, so, six sorry, years someone's now. mic on. Hey, Mick, we're going to, uh, Jeff, can you help me out? Can you mute Mick or, or Mick? I got it. All right, cool. And then let's keep going here on the Zoom chat. Um, we have, what's the best way to learn Google ads with a strategy? Um, actually, funny enough, here's a little loophole on Google ads. Um, there's actually people on Fiverr who will just run your whole campaign for you. And same thing, um, you know, you just give them your, your account ID and give them access and you can, um, they can just run the campaign. So that's another strategy. I, I honestly wouldn't. I think one thing you got, I've learned this the hard way because Patrick knows this. I, I love learning and I've wasted, definitely I've left millions of dollars on the table in my life staying in learning mode. Um, and I think sometimes you have to learn, Hey, I don't need to be good at Google ads. I just need to know someone who's good at Google ads. So that would probably be my right answer. Like I, I, you know, I have a Google account rep who does like from Google, by the way, cause I spend a lot of money on Google ads who actually runs all my ads for me. Like I literally just give them like three bullet points and they do it all now. Cause I spend enough money with Google. So there's, that's what I would say on the Google ads part. I, I don't honestly have a good course or something to buy. Um, or any good resource on, on how to learn Google ads. Um, in terms of the most important things you look at and due diligence, Shannon asked it. 
Um, for me, the biggest thing I look for in due diligence is how many dedicated websites are on page one of Google. So if I'm looking up at a niche in a city, I'm seeing a lot of Yelp, Home Advisor, Angie's List, different things like that. I'm looking at the Google Maps. Is it, are these businesses saying seven plus years in business on all the top three in the three pack? Or are you seeing, you know, are you seeing it being zero reviews, two reviews, one review? And when you look at how many years those map listings have been up, they're all kind of new. That's, you know, I'm looking at the size of the city. Um, I'm looking at, I use Ahrefs as my SEO tool. I know there's a lot of great tools out there. Um, I look into SEO in the Ahrefs SEO toolbar. I look for search results that are like DR zero or DR of one or two, which means domain rating. Once again, too, too many, too many things to, um, to answer here. So I don't want to, Patrick, am I allowed to, and, and honestly, no, like, am I allowed to ask someone to like, just DM me and I can send them a, like point them to a right resource. I just don't want to plug. We don't, we don't have, no. a lot of I have nothing here. All right, cool. I have nothing. I have nothing here to sell. I have no product whatsoever. So I just wanted to be respectful of that. Um, but if you, if Shannon, if you, if you DM me on Facebook, um, I can, I, I, I can just actually like send you a couple links to, to that stuff. Um, but right. let's see. Yeah. 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 If you, if you want to, if you want to DM me, I can post it in the group. If you, for whatever reason, don't want to do that, I can, uh, I can throw that into the group as well so that other people can see some of the thought process that Shiv uses when he goes into uh, his due diligence. Right. That, that's actually, that's actually preferable. Yeah. I, if you post in Patrick's group and tag me in it um, that way, hopefully, hopefully I don't forget, I'll, I'll get to it. And then that way everyone can benefit from it. Um, and so let's see here. Um, so here's, here's, a, here's a sales question for you. Um, yeah, sounds like a sales question. What do you suggest as an answer when a prospect asks you, AKA new marketer in that niche, what experience do you have and why should I hire you? Do you lean on experience of other marketers in JK LMV? So, so if let's, let's assume scenario one, scenario one is you already sent leads in advance or some value in advance. The immediate response is, hey, I'm more than happy to talk to you about my experience, but I, let's be honest, the, these leads sell themselves. So I got you a bunch of leads. You told me you closed business. Like, it doesn't really matter whether, you know, I have zero experience and I dropped out of sixth grade um, and I, I don't know my ABCs, or if I have a PhD in Googleology, like I gave you leads and made you money. So you know, this works, you're making money, let's figure out a deal, right? So that's one, if you already gave results in advance. Um, two, if you didn't give results in advance, what I would definitely do is I would leverage the, the groups you are in because the groups you are in are doing the exact same thing and teaching the exact same skill set, which means you have the exact same ability to produce results as anyone in those groups. So you shouldn't feel guilt if you're feeling guilt. And I trust me, I thought this in the beginning too. Um, I've learned that, well, why should I feel guilt? Everyone in uh, LMV or any one of these programs. And by the way, both of those programs, I ran the sales team for. Um, and so to me, I know that both of those groups, you can get, if, if, one student's having success, you can have the same success. So I would leverage, I would leverage um, kind of the, the conglomerate of, you know, the 10,000 students between the groups. So for example, if they are a tow truck owner, I would tell them about, yeah, I have plenty of tow truck sites I can show you on page one of Google and go in those Facebook groups, type in tow truck, type in towing and use examples of other, other student sites that are ranked number one. I, I, you know, Obviously, would it be preferable to be in a situation that Patrick and I are in where I can just use my own examples? Sure. But at some point, you have to you have to use some sort of something to prove what you can do. And I don't I think if that's what you need to do, do it. And what I do in those situations early on at the very beginning is I would give them a, mon a money back guarantee. So I'd say, hey, look, here's a bunch of examples of sites that are number one. If you're unhappy with me you can literally give me any 30 day notice and I'll refund your last payment as well. So that's a way to get um, guilt or, or anything out of the equation. So um, yeah, cool. Patrick, do you want to read me the next question? Yeah. I was if just uh, trying to respond to one of these people. Okay. So, cool. um, so Julie asks, what is LMV? LMV is uh, stands for local marketing vault. It's like a spinoff of the JK. It focuses more on like paid ad strategies 
And, and I would add to and kind of combine this with um, Shiv's answer is, look, it, it's great to be able to land these clients and, and, and do that quickly, especially when you're getting started. But what I've noticed is the money doesn't really start to come in and it's not really that passive. And, and Shiv, I'd love to hear if you agree with this until you get a ranking website. Once that right. happens, then stuff's on autopilot. And that's what this business model is all about. So if you're in a situation where you're trying to land prospects to get like fast money, I think what you're going to find out is one of two things is like, if you do not use that money that you're getting from them to bring them leads, which at that point, if you use that money, you're not really getting fast money. Then you're going to, if you don't do that, you're going to lose the client. And if you do they do that, you're not going to really have the fast money. So you kind of like got one of those two, they're not going to stick around for six months while you rank a site. Right. So it's always good to like the, the way to go fast and look sexy is, is really it's, it, it's masquerading as running ads. In my opinion, the real way to do it is to like build and get your websites ranking as quickly as possible. And once you do that, the sales process becomes a thousand times easier, right? I gave this example before it's a lot easier to sell a Ferrari when it's parked in the driveway in front of the person than when you have to describe what a Ferrari looks like to maybe someone who hasn't seen it before. Right. So, Agreed. So like, yeah, not, nothing, beats, with- nothing will ever be actually having the site up and ranked. And so to me, you know, I, I always, you know, when I talk about sales or anything like that, because that's usually where most of my experience kind of stems from, um, truthfully you know nothing will ever be like having the results so to me anything i can say in sales is really a hedge or a way to hide behind the fact that we can't just do the correct thing which is just have the results in front of us and just let the results do all the talking it's the same thing of like you know i love free trials i love i mean look at Got, look at the things you sign up for every day. Look at all the software you guys buy. Like so much software is bought on free trials. So many things are bought on free trials and um, Costco makes their entire, you know, upsells is, is those samples. Right. So um, I, I think nothing will beat that. Um, but second place, second place has been really good at um, conveying, you know, persuasion and influence. That would be a good second place to it, not so, having. Shit, so, the, the, the key to that second place victory, though, a lot of time lies in the fact that you've done the first one a bunch of times, right? Like, correct. That, yeah. That's I mean, and, and it's I so think... easy for you and I to be able to sell the stuff is that like, we speak with so much confidence and, and certainty of how things are going to play out that they pick up on it. And it like, so yeah, yeah. And, and, and actually, I, I would say this is an interesting answer, too, which is like, if you're lacking some of the like, yeah, in the beginning, you know, I I actually was really nervous the first several calls I got. And I, and I, I used to like, I think people think that, Oh, like I was not scared doing calls. Like I was scared doing calls for my first entire year in the business, like up to like $7,000 a month of income. Like I was still, every time I would talk to someone, I'd be like shaky or like, I'd have like, you know, I'd be you know, crossing my fingers or, I would stumble across words and stutter. I would apologize. I'd say the word sorry a lot on calls because I think I said something wrong. Um, so you just got to, you know, I think the thing for sure is the confidence in that six years of doing it, knowing that what I'm saying is truthful. Um, and then three for me is I've just done so many calls. Like I don't, I know no one can say something crazy to me anymore. Like there's nothing that's going to throw me off a call today um, or very few things, very few things where and that's just because I've heard it all. I've heard the craziest of craziest uh, questions on calls. Um, and so to me, I just know how to handle those things. I also highly recommend if you're able to pull it off, I think everyone here is absolutely ludicrously insane for not doing their calls through Zoom. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, you know, Timmy, the tow truck driver is blue collar and, you know, he, he's in his overalls driving a tow truck. He's not going to hop on Zoom. You would be mistaken. Like I have a lot of people who I never thought would hop on Zoom, hop on Zoom. And I'm telling you to me, when they see my face and I can share my computer screen, I've really been able to um, convince people a hundred times better. Um, and maybe here is a bad example. Maybe everyone's looking at my face, looking at my bad hair and, and, you know, me and behind his bed, you know, uh, headboard going, what the heck, uh, who is this kid? But 
I promise when it comes to closing local Legion owners, I've closed a lot more on Zoom <laughs> lately. And I 100%. think the Zoom yeah. has definitely helped. Uh, you know, and, and this goes even further for, um, you know, not to be like sexist or anything, but, but yeah. women like Janari, I know this is one of the strategies that she often uses is she gets her pretty face on those Zoom calls in front of these people. And like, if we're trying to sell contractors on things, like they are going to have a harder time saying no to women. That's like, that's just, a, a, in my opinion, that's a fact. So getting on this Zoom and being able to establish a face-to-face -face conversation with this is going to build trust regardless of what sex you are, right? So like being able to create this personal relationship is part of what creates trust. And that trust is necessary for the sale to happen, right? So, um, you know, it's, it's, if you're scared of it, and, and I've said this before, if, if this scares you, this is what you need to do, right? You need to um, attack these fears. And if you don't want to, that's totally fine. But your job when you started this business is not to build websites and SEO, you became a problem solver. And like, you can go like Laurent did earlier on this call where he is attacking this and he's going to get on these calls and he's going to learn this skill set, which I personally think the sales skill set is one of the most valuable skills that you can learn in business. If you choose that you do not want to do that, you still have to solve that problem. And that might be hiring someone or finding someone that can do it. I personally would recommend that you do it, but for whatever reason, if you choose not to, that problem still exists and it still needs to be solved. So Shiv, somebody asked a question. And I know that, that um, you and I both have kind of a passion for personal development. And yeah. you've done a lot of, uh, I think you've been to some, I know that you did uh, Jordan Belfort's sales course. Is there other sales courses or even like personal development courses that you think would be advantageous to you for sales? And, and guys, part of this is it like things that can help you that are not necessarily um, set up as sales courses are just like like building like, courses that build emotional intelligence or communication skills are going to be very advantageous in the sales area. So if those are the skills that you're lacking, you may want to combine that with some other ones that, you know, makes you a little bit more comfortable um, in these situations or, you know, um, we they're like, we don't all start at the same starting line. It's just like, yeah, but everybody has yep. like different innate skill set and they have different experiences. So you're going to have to kind of like self-diagnose and find out what part, like it, it I, I don't think there's ever just like this, like, oh, I'm just not good at sales. It's probably like maybe oh. you're not good at communication or you're not good at one part, one other part of it. So you got to have that self-diagnosis and, 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 and make that decision. Shiv, what do you have to add to that? Yeah. Um, so, you know, in terms of um, courses, uh, yeah, straight, I think definitely I, I really do think um, Straight Line Persuasion by Jordan Belfort is the number one sales course. Uh, I, I've had through like a really, you know, obviously, you know, I have a little bit of a, I guess, more involved relationship with Jordan Belfort. Um, but um, funny enough, he um, he has a, two audio books. So if anyone here has Audible, um, a little, little life hack is both of his audio books are narrated by him. And one is called Way of the Wolf. So there's The Wolf of Wall Street. But that book's whatever. Um, Way of the Wolf is unbelievably phenomenal. And, and the entire book is about sales. And it's all about looping and, and how to build the value and about dropping, um, you know, how to drop kind of your, your um, you know, you, let's say you, uh, you have a big package and how to kind of downsell. Um, so that entire book, it's really easy to, to listen to because it's audio only and it's from Jordan Belfort himself. And obviously he's very charismatic. So I've listened to that book a couple of times. Um, Dan Locke has high ticket closers and I don't think someone, the hard part with it is there's a couple really good bits he has on that, um, in it. It's a hard one because so much of it, I think is kind of basic. There's a couple things that are pretty phenomenal. Um, so those are some good resources. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Um, I, I personally think no. doing some of these other things like um, e even like um, Dale Carnegie, Tony Robbins, any of these other things that are self-development. I, I took this this class based out of Las Vegas. Um, it was uh, a, a lot of poker players gravitated towards it because poker is, is really a game about people. And this course um, is called like a choice, choice Leadership Center out of Las Vegas. It focuses on emotional intelligence. And when I'm doing my sales calls, I just feel this, the stuff that we learned in, in, inside of that course 
is helping me. So uh, I think that as you go through this stuff, and uh, I, I, I bet she would agree, is like I've gone through some of Dan Locke's stuff. I've gone through Jordan Belfort's stuff. And what happens is, you know, it may be that each one of these that you go through, 95% of what's covered is has been covered in some of these other things that you've done. And it's that 5% that you pick up that that adds value. And you keep going through more of these and, and reading books and challenging yourself. And you keep on picking up that 5%. And, and it just, it starts to stack over time. And it could be that like, hey, I picked up this 5% from these three or four different people. And now this like fifth 5% that I, that I collect is the missing key. And it just multiplies all this stuff because like I had to get the foundation in place before I could really leverage all this. So, you know, what Shiv was talking about earlier is like, yeah, he closed this lawyer for 48K in like 15 or 30 minutes, but it was really like six years and 30 minutes, right? It was that- Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And without a doubt. And like, you know, for me, it's, it's six years of also, you know, I got teed up really nice on that call, right? So like it, it goes back to, I always, the analogy you want to use with marketing and sales is marketing is hitting that golf ball and like how close can you get that golf ball to the to the hole, right? And that's marketing. So really great marketing is that that golf ball is, you know, one, one you know, a couple inches away from the hole and then you can just tap it in as a salesperson. Um, so to me, it's like, I didn't, it's not like I did a hundred, so much work on the phone. It was a, cu a culmination of all my work, all my experience, having a client that's been really happy with me and that client actually selling and raving to this attorney about me. So when the attorney gets on the phone with me, he already thinks I'm better than sliced bread. So I don't have to say a whole lot, right? In fact, all I really did was ask the attorney questions. So that would really be my, um, kind of thing with sales is like, if you're scared of sales, I highly recommend that you just make it a point to make the other person talk as much as possible, ask questions, try to get your client to talk as much as possible or whoever you're prospecting. Um, and they will almost lead you in the direction. Like they'll almost kind of hint or you'll be able to kind of navigate through that sales call, even if you're inexperienced, just on letting them talk. So don't feel you have to say a lot of words. Um, uh, and that's how I would do it in the beginning. Like just try to just keep asking questions and just hope to God that that person says something that you go, Oh, that's an opening. That's a problem. That's a, that's a solution that I can solve. Um, so that's, that's all I'd say. And yeah, do, do courses, taste things. Um, I've done a lot of courses um, and, but nothing's going to beat reps. Nothing's going to be just doing it over time. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's important guys, when he says, ask questions that, that, the, one of the most important parts of that is, is listen, listen to the answers of the questions, because it's not, it's not just getting them to talk. What Shiv's doing when he does that, he's asking the questions and then he's building his, his strategy based on the responses, right? So if like the person, you ask the right question, the person's going to tell you what the problem is. And then you can frame your sales pitch around that problem. You can identify from the questions you're asking where they're scared, where they're going to have objections. And you could kind of um, preemptively address those objections based on the tone or based on, you know, some of the, some of the verbiage and, and what they've actually told you. So like you, you need to be a sponge when those responses come out of like, okay, I've got this person talking. Let me build my strategy based on everything. They're, I mean, they're giving up, they're, they're giving up their, all their problems and their issues. If you're asking the right questions and you need to tailor that and, and kind of, I don't want to say use it against them because you need to use that to get them out of their own way. Because what we like the, the baseline for all of this is like what we have can legitimately help these people dramatically, right? This is like, it's a crime to let these people continue on with their business without having what we can do for them because it, it can make a huge, and I've seen it so many, there, there was a guy that, um, you know, I, I think I maybe shared this before. There's a guy that his truck was getting repossessed. And he was going to have to move back in with his parents. And I told him like, Hey, don't pay us for a couple months. Let's just like, let's just get this. Let's just get, get you back in shape. And now he's got like five crews or something, right? He's bought multiple trucks, right? I could have let him go, get away. I, I felt like he was a good guy who, who needed a break. And like, if I just dismissed him, 
it, 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 like, it would have been, it would have been really easy, but like the key is to get them out of the way. They're scared. They don't know you. They don't trust you. Right. So if you believe in what we can do and how it can help them, like just, just like letting them get away from this is, is going to be detrimental to their future. Right. So I, I keep that in my heart when I'm, when I'm having these conversations to these people is like, it's, I'm not, I'm not trying to trick them. It's definitely in their best interest to do business with us because I'm going to go all out. I'm, I'm going to treat their competitors like they're my competitors. And I'm going to try to do everything I can to help this company. Right. So if that's your attitude, like they don't know that when they're having this conversation and, and it's kind of your job to, to convince them of this. And when they're spilling their guts on this, like they're giving you oh, so that you can better assist them. So I just want to make sure that that that's clear. So um, do we have any more questions popping in there, Jeff? Well, we got, I got, I got nine more minutes. So okay. uh, yeah, we normally try to lock these down to an hour. We're at an hour and 20 minutes already. So um, no worries, man. I, I'm sure everyone appreciates your young wisdom in its, even if it's in its like, limited time <laughs> i appreciate everyone about backlinks i don't know if you have like the quick down and dirty on uh what your backlinking strategy is these days what do you what yeah do you so so my favorite backlinking strategy um once again i don't want to i don't want to endorse any one tool um but ahrefs has this thing um called like a content explorer where you can look at like blog posts and articles about a certain niche so let's take towing and i'll show you all these articles and blog posts about tow, like tow trucks or towing. And what I like to do is I like to outreach. So I like to email, um, find the people who, who wrote those blog posts and email them and have them basically offer them some kind of money where it's 25 bucks or it's a link for link. Hey, I have another link that's powerful that I can give you um, and have them modify an old article or an old website of theirs to add my link. And the reason why is because it has domain age, it has um, DR, and it has UR. Um, and that's why I really like it. So there we go. So Patrick's showing it um, on his computer screen. And you can see, look at all these little um, pages here. And so you can reach out and look at, the reason why I like it too is the relevancy. There's relevancy a lot of times in the domain itself. There's relevancy in the site title. There's relevancy in the content of the website. So these are incredibly hyper- um, hyper high quality backlinks. And a lot of times you can get these for really, really, really uh, cheap. A lot of times these business owners, Hey, a hundred bucks, a hundred bucks or like 50 bucks. And I, I have sites that just three of these, um, you know, get my site pinned number one page one for, for Larry. Now, here we go, you know, three years later. So that's my number one favorite method is um, going and using content explorer, finding articles, finding things um, and trying to find um, old, old posts that have some juice to a DR and UR um, and, and get them to, to modify uh, their articles for a few bucks and add, add a link to it. I love that strategy. This is super easy guys. We know that um, Ahrefs is uh, it's a paid tool, right? And uh, so there's different, group buys that you can be a part of that you can get access to this they're 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 all over the place you can ask in in different very you know in various groups and get access to the stuff but basically once you're in here for those of you guys that already have it or for those of you that are that are going to get it soon what i did is i logged in and then i clicked on content explorer i searched for towing we come down here we see a number of sites i found that you know i'm just kind of looking through this so this is like maybe like a government site. So probably not going to get a link from there. Here's Topeka Towing. This is a business site. Um, they may or may not be monitoring their responses there. Um, this is US, US News. So they're probably not going to respond. This is, a, this is a legit towing site right here. So I just basically open this in a new tab. And then if we click up here, there's a contact, right? So I could just reach out to them and say, hey, um, can I pay you $100 to have you add a link I'm not in San Jose. We're not competitors. I'm in Dallas or wherever. I'd love to get a link because it just seems like you have a really good site. I would compliment these people and then offer to pay them. Like just like 
you know, um, it's probably not going to, you don't even necessarily have to explain 100% of why you're doing it. You could just be like, Hey, I know it's probably like a long shot, but I just really want to be associated with a site like yours because you look like you did a really good job on your site. It looks like you have a strong business here and that's the type of people that I want to be connected with. So I'm willing to pay you for this. And just all I ask is that, you know, throw a link on your site that points to my site. No big deal. Right. So, yeah. And, and if you have a Twitter site that's ranked number one from a different client, like if you're like, you already have a couple clients, you can always hit them up and say, Hey, I'm willing to pay a hundred dollars or, or like you can do or slash and, you know, give you um, a link from my site to yours to just keep your site ranked high. Like you could also do it both and like, it will help your site stay ranked on Google. It will help mine. That's in a different city rank. So exactly offer money and link or both like some combination thereof. Um, and, and yeah, I, you know, it, it is a low risk sponsor in general, cause most people don't check their context, but let's say even, I would say like 5% to 10% of people will say yes to it, but that's all you need. You only need three of these. Like you really do in local legion, you only need three phenomenally high quality, super relevant, powerful links. And your site will be pinned to number one forever because most people don't know how to get these quality links. Here, here, so. here's a strategy that, that you could throw into this is, uh, this is, I just kind of thought of this in real time, but I think this would work phenomenal. So let's say you take a screenshot of their site right here that says San Jose Towing Service with their phone number. And then you have you yourself or you have someone from Fiverr, like put a play button on this, on, on, like superimpose a play button on top of this. And then you send this image with a link from this image to a YouTube video. In that YouTube video, you give them some free advice, right? Like, hey, um, maybe you give them a heat map of how their towing site is doing and give them some strategies of how they could improve it, show them where they're weak, where they're strong, give them some value, and then offer them money on top of that. Like, I bet, I would be willing to bet that that combination of activities will result in a much higher response rate. And it's something that um, you could probably do in just a few minutes, right? It, once you get this down, if they see their own site with a play button, they're going to have a hard time not clicking on that. All right, cool. So um, I love, I love, yeah. I love the idea, Shiv, with uh, the content explorer. I know that you're down to probably three minutes That's now. Awesome, cool. Any other questions? Stop sharing. It looks like the audio is breaking up for you, Shiv. I don't know if it's on my end. Yeah, sorry if it's my end cutting out, um, but yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, it's a it's a cool strategy, and it's definitely, you know, for me, I feel it's um, I feel it's the most natural looking. So, Shiv, Google. with that strategy, you're emailing people. Do you have like a, a favorite email program that you do to send out all these emails? How, how do you put the nuts and bolts together of this once you've identified some of these sites? Um, I mean, they're pretty straightforward emails. Um, I mean, you know, I do have a, I guess a copy and paste, but it's, it's literally kind of what you said. It's like, Hey, um, I know this sounds weird, but you know, I have a website that's a tow truck website in a different market. And if I can get you to link on your site, it would help me greatly. Um, and it would also benefit you, um, because I can send you a link and help you get higher rankings on Google. If this makes no sense, I'm literally willing to hand you a hundred dollars to do virtually nothing give me a call. <laughs> like, you know, I just try to like make it like, Hey, I know this is a bizarre email to get, but I'm willing to pay you a hundred dollars. So if you can just uh, to do like one minute worth of work. Um, and so to me, that's kind of like the template and I just yeah. do them. And, and obviously you can have, you know, in the future of your scale, you can have a VA do it or whatever, but, um, it's, it, it really doesn't take that much time. It maybe takes me an hour to send out, you know, like four, you know, 40 requests. And I know out of 40, I'll get four that will say yes to it. So and that's all, that's really all you need, right? It's like, like you said, three or that's four. It. If you're doing your due diligence and you're not picking a super tough niche, like you don't need a hundred of these, you need like three or four. So three or $400 in backlinks. And now you've got like something that's hopefully in telling maybe that's 500, a thousand dollars a month, right? So you're going to yep. get your investment back pretty quickly. Yep. Awesome, brother. Cool. I know you got to jump. So I really appreciate you jumping on here. We'd love to have you again on future calls, man. It's great to see your awesome face and your cool mustache. And we <laughs> everybody 
this is it. It looks like you've got a little goatee going with it. Looking good, man. Oh, this is this is this is getting shaved right off off the zoom. I, I did not think I was going to show my face. Uh, so <laughs> sorry, um, I, I put you on uh, I put you on the spot there. But uh, yeah, awesome. thank you for jumping on here and helping us out. Yeah, absolutely. Good seeing you all. Bye, see ya. You too, Bye. brother. Bye, Shiv. You too. Bye. All right, guys. So I had a few things planned and um, obviously, you know, these calls are pretty fluid with how, how the stuff runs. I want to quickly go over some updates that, that we've released. We have a big update that's going to, um, we're going to publish it um, in the next hour, actually. We are waiting. We know that like a lot of the site traffic on our site on Lead Generated is less during the, um, you know, the U.S. nighttime. So um, we are going to be releasing a contacts module, which has kind of been um, the uh, hinging point for a lot of other updates that we have because it's going to be so involved with the future of lead generated. So I'm going to post in the group a little overview of that once we get it out. I don't have good dummy data for this, but basically the contacts, uh, the idea of a contact inside lead generated is um, it can be used, your contact every lead that comes into the system is going to be created as a contact. Okay. And that contact can be shared in a lot of different areas. The ability to import is now going, it's, that's a part of this. So for those of you that want to import for reputation management and send out a, a bunch of reviews, you're simply going to download a spreadsheet, make sure everything's in the right format, and then you can import it into our contacts. So we couldn't add in our pipeline system. Um, we couldn't add in like the reputation management texting, um, we couldn't add in the task because there's dependencies with the contacts module. So we had to get this in there first. With all these dependencies to balance, it's been um, it's been a challenge to get this one live. Uh, but it, it is, it's, um, you know, we agreed that we are going to push it out tonight. So I'm just kind of waiting for the traffic to die down because every time we introduce new features, we introduce the opportunity for new bugs. So we're trying to minimize that by doing it while you guys are, a lot of you guys are sleeping. Um, I am going to also share with you guys, some of you guys may have seen this. Um, this has been out for a few days. We have updated our user interface. It's always been a challenge for, um, for the notifications. I think we have moved it over into a place where things are a lot easier to manage here. Um, let me get rid of this notification here. Okay, if you guys see that, I think you can do a hard refresh to get rid of that that little notification that was in the top right corner. So the way this works now, um, hopefully this is a lot more self-explanatory than it used to be. So you have all the companies listed here. We can obviously search through these and we've got a checkbox in, in, uh, for each one of these. So, oops, we did not mean to include texting in this. I just realized that. So texting is something that we're gonna be putting into this um, due to kind of some of our limitations with call sling, I think what we're going to do is we're going to sell one phone number that can handle the texting for um, all the different notifications that we have set up. So um, I'm going to have this removed today because um, I didn't realize this was already in here. Um, but we have in-app and email notifications. So you can see if I like click on this, I click on Allen's company, it happens in real time. Previously, there was like some confusion there with the update. So this is for all the different company type notifications. You guys will notice over time that we add a lot more to this area as we add in more um, more notification opportunities. If you wanna do anything related to GMBs, that's gonna be done through, through this tab. I only have one GMB in the system, but you can manage these notifications through there. Um, so some of you guys may have also noticed over the last week, we added in the ability to um, download PDFs. So that is something that is, um, you know, that, that, that is something that has been there for a while. I'm not sure why it's not showing here. Um, is that where it is? I thought it was right there. Um, I know that a couple of you guys have used it. We've also added it into like the lead screen on the company level. Okay, so not quite sure why it's not showing up. Maybe it's, um, hmm. if anyone's used that and they have any, reason why, like, I, I know that, I know that it's in there because I know the people have used it. So I can get you more information. I thought it was right there. Um, maybe I'm mistaken. Okay. So we've got the contacts module. Um, another, another thing that we have is um, we've had the problem with the second email and reputation management. The first one will come from whatever like SMTP address, but the second one was kind of like 
reverting to the admin at leadgenerated.com. And now we've um, we fixed that issue. So that should be fixed by tomorrow morning. Um, there's been an ongoing position issue with uh, with our with our heat maps, and we believe we have finally solved that. Where it's not like choosing the right city uh, for certain GMBs. So I think our update that is going to go live tonight will fix that. So I'm interested to hear from any of you guys that have had that issue. Um, we believe that's going to be fixed tomorrow morning. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to talk to you guys about is um, hosting. So we touched on this briefly at the beginning of this call. Um, so, you know, I've mentioned th there's a lot of different ways to be successful with this. Um, you know, what we've done in our agency is, um, you know, we've got close to 400 sites and all of our stuff is hosted on WordPress. I really love the ability to download themes and have an almost completed site where I can just basically add content to it and change out the pictures and have a theme, um, you know, a pro very professional looking site. So I've mentioned this in the past that you can hire developers from onlinejobs.ph for between three and $4 an hour that are gonna be experts in this. So this fear that you have of not understanding the platform um, honestly, it's one of the first things that I would outsource. When you have somebody that can be paid that amount of money for that level of skill set, it's not something that I would spend a lot of time trying to learn. It's just I think your time is better spent doing other things. Um, so yes, it is true that um, WordPress being the most popular, like the most popular platform for building websites in the world, it's a double-edged sword. So some of these are going to get hacked more often. But once you put a couple things in place, it's very, very rare. Okay, so some of the things that you're gonna to wanna to put in place, there's some plugins and I can share some of this stuff with you guys. Um, another one is, is Cloudflare. Okay, so Cloudflare is a free service. So I think we have a page set up here. Let me just check this. All right, so if you guys go to leadgenerated.com, I think it's slash refer. So I will continue to add in some of these um, referral type places, okay? So just a heads up, web host Python is what we use. This link here is a referral link, okay? So I do get money if you guys click on this. That's not why I'm sharing with you. Feel free to not use my referral link if you don't want to or use a different service. There's plenty of really good web hosts out there. I've been through tons of them. This is my favorite one by far. I really like web host Python. I've got close to 400 sites. I'm spending $130 a month. Okay. So, you know, if I were spending like, you know, between like 10 and $14 per site per month, then I would be spending over $4,000 a month. Right. So um, I've loved this site. I think that, that their customer service is been unmatched. Um, I think the, what you can pay for, I've got like a, what's called a virtual private server. So if you go to their site, we'll post Python here and um if you don't want to use their referral, then you can, it almost looks like it didn't correctly take the referral. So either way is fine. I don't care if we get a referral or not. This is the site. You can come directly here. Um, they have a lot of different options. This is one of the ones I'm using, this VPS managed. Um, and basically they'll set it up for you. So this is a super fast server. So for those of you guys, there's different options here, right? So I think I'm paying for this $90 one. And then they have something called Railgun, which is like an add-on. Maybe I'm paying for one of these. I don't know. Maybe I'm paying for this 109 one, I think. And then they have something called Railgun, which is a plugin. It's like a caching plugin. So it makes your website run really fast. So after having my stuff on AWS, Amazon Web Services, which is supposed to be the best web host that exists, I think, but it's, it's expensive for certain things, um, my speeds increased quite a bit, okay, when I combined it with this. Cloudflare is a free service. So if you go to cloudflare.com or you click on that link, that link for Cloudflare is not a referral link. I don't know if they have a referral program or not, but since it's free, um, I don't know how that would work, but this is Cloudflare. So basically how this works is you go to your registrar. So say you go to um, buy your domain from GoDaddy. Let's say you buy like windowcleaningdatenohio.com and I, on GoDaddy and in GoDaddy, I'm gonna point my DNS. GoDaddy can walk you through this. I'm gonna point it at Cloudflare, okay? And then inside Cloudflare, I'm gonna set up my settings and from Cloudflare, I'm gonna point it at my actual web host, which for me is web host Python, 
Okay. So it's going to speed up your site. It's going to protect it against robots. It's going to do all sorts of awesome stuff. Like a lot of protection happens here. And another thing it does is it's going to anonymize your web host. Okay. Because Google sees Cloudflare. Google doesn't know that Cloudflare, like where Cloudflare is pointing. So I can have 400 websites on web host Python and not have any larger footprint because Cloudflare has billions of sites across the internet. So it's not suspicious to have a bunch of different sites on Cloudflare. Like they're a very well-known, reputable, popular, uh, you know, a, a lot of serious businesses use these. Now they have paid services. I'm not exactly sure all the benefits of their paid services. I've loved the benefits that we've gotten. Most of our stuff went from scoring like, you know, if you use some of these like GT metrics, these like um, speed test sites for websites. Most of our stuff was like in the 90 to 95 range because we had really good developers. And then it went to like around 98 to 99 when we set it up through Cloudflare with web host Python. So our sites were very fast. The owner of the company actually jumped on a call with me and discussed my needs. And then they migrated all my stuff. They didn't charge me anything. They took like 400 sites off of Amazon Web Services and brought them all over. And I didn't have to pay them anything for that, which I thought was phenomenal. And then they've set this up. So now all of our stuff, I've gotten rid of some of our other hosts. You know, I actually think that web host Python is cheaper and I think that they're quite a bit better. So that is my strong recommendation. Feel free to not use them though. There's tons of different ones and also feel free to not use my referral link. I just figured I would throw it on there because um, I do like to collect money when possible. So, um, but you know, I'm not recommending it for that purpose. And um, you know, if it feels weird, then then just don't do it and just come directly here if you like what I'm saying about them. So um, you can see right here, this is Railgun. That's the other one. Another benefit of this, as well as Cloudflare, is the free SSLs. So you don't have to pay for SSLs, right? It, it all comes like included. And their ticket, I would say the average time on their ticket response is 15 minutes. That's kind of what I've experienced. So I'll put a ticket in and then I get an email. It's just like, it's unbelievable how, how quick they are. So strong recommendation. It is hard for me to recommend stuff. And um, I feel really comfortable with this, um, recommending these guys. So um, you guys have any questions? I'm happy to answer those. Yeah, so can I ask you a question, Patrick? Sure, Janari. Um, I know you've mentioned to me about web post Python. So definitely something I need to transfer. I have. I ended up, um, I'm doing WordPress as well, and I have everything on um, uh, SiteGround is what I have it on. But <clears throat> based on what I, what you just said and what you told me before, yeah, this is where I need to go. My question is, for now, the Cloudflare one, can I point that to, to, to any hosting, or is that just That's something right. of partnership with, with Site, um, I'm sorry, with Python? There is no, there's no connection with this company in Python. So okay. if you guys have Weebly or Snaps or whatever it is, this can be an intermediary. It doesn't really matter what the web host is or the registrar. So they okay. just kind of like stand there. If you think about um, Cloudflare is kind of like a bouncer and you're, they're, they're just going to kind of keep the bad guys out of the, out of the club there and, and stand in that way. And, and they're going to also like not really, um, expose a lot of the private information. So they have like automatic robot detection. So a lot of the hacking that's happening is happening from robots and Cloudflare is gonna block that stuff, right? So what's actually like those robots eat up a lot of your bandwidth. And if you don't have that, just like with that on its own makes your website faster because they're just like keeping that from getting to your site, which is gotcha. like you can- The imaginary uh, site run has Cloud, Cloudflare built into it new interface if you just go into the i don't know where it is on the left hand navigation but if you go to the cloud flare thing i think it's under site and security you can um you can sign up and apply cloud flare to each one of your sites on site ground for free oh okay okay because it's the the name sounds familiar so maybe that's where i've probably seen it okay yeah. perfect you have a deal with cloud flare as well yeah, you, you can see right here, free protect and accelerate individual websites. So that's what I have. I've got hundreds of sites on here and I've never gave them a dollar. And um, wow. it's definitely protected my sites and made them faster. Okay, awesome. Thank you for sharing this. This is great. You are very welcome. All right, so 
I think that goes through my, um, that's the notes that I had here to mention to you guys. Is there any final questions before we jump off here? I know this has been a little bit of a all over the place call where we've talked about a few different things and we had our buddy Shiv show up. Any other final questions before we jump off? So Patrick, the first step would be to move uh, my sites. I, I, I work with site ground, right? Yep. So the first step would be to move to Python, right? Uh huh. And then uh, have a cloud fair inter interact inter uh, interact with the cloud fair. What that is that the route to take? Who should I contact first? What would be my first step? Yeah. So so what I would do is I would call or um, go to Webhost Python. There's their sales number. There's their phone number. They have a chat mm -hmm. and you can tell them what you have and what your plans are. And uh, like I said, I jumped on with the owner of the company and he pointed me in the right direction. And then he had a person um, they recommended. I didn't know a lot about Cloudflare at the time. So they recommended this third party Cloudflare and I signed up and I actually shared my login information to Cloudflare and then they set everything up for me. I gave them access to like, in your case, what would be my site ground. They downloaded everything, they uploaded it, and then they set up Cloudflare and basically everything just like worked. And it was, it was done. I think maybe it took um, 24 hours, 48 hours to migrate like 400 sites for me. And um, I had a few questions along the way and they were just like all over it. And they have videos. It's, it's a little bit different setup. Um, but once you once you understand how it works, it's just like anything else. It's like it's pretty simple. It's pretty simple to follow. Okay, got it. Thanks, Patrick. You are welcome. How you doing, Vadim? I'm doing well. You know, uh, here and there, trying to put things together. You know, I've been thinking about putting a network of my uh, contractors together. And instead of just working with one contractor on one project, have them all under one umbrella and work as a team. So if one can handle one thing, the another is going to jump in, but we're going to share some kind of a referral fee on top of that. So I think it's, it's working out, uh, pretty well so far. It's the first week that I actually implemented it. But it seems like, you know, as a team, we work much better. And, you know, no leads are missing, no money is going out of the window, you know. It's a much better approach from my point of view. And everyone is happy. All of them wants to, to grow together. So it's not like they're trying to squeeze a dollar from each other. They just understand we're in the same boat, same team. Let's, you know, try to help each other out and grow together. And everyone specializes in their own niche. Like, let's say one does A, another one does B, you know, so that's how we, I'm, I structure it with them and they're loving it. So we'll see how it's going to play out. I love, I love that idea. I think that's really creative. And, you know, it's, um, it's a referral, just like we were talking about earlier on this call, how valuable referrals can be for our business. But our clients, like being the person that builds the referral network for them, is uh, I think that's a, I think that's an awesome idea. Re really creative. Thanks, thanks. We'll see. I'll update you. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, hopefully that works out well. I'd love to hear how how it goes. All right. So, um, any other final messages here? Um, we got a win from Emery. I hope I'm pronouncing my win this week was finding this group after using LG since September. Devon, thanks for looping me in. Great to hear so many familiar voices of knowledge. Yeah, so uh, welcome to the group. I've done my best to try to locate everybody that's using the software and it's it's been a challenge because not everybody has their name, maybe doesn't line up with their Facebook name or maybe they don't even have a Facebook account. If any of you guys are aware of people using Lead Generated um, that, um, that that isn't in the group, be sure to ask them to, uh, to, to jump on if you think that they can get value from this. And, and thank you, uh, Devin, man, you just like constantly help. And I, I certainly appreciate you, everything that you do to help us out, help me out and help out the group. So um, re really appreciate everything you do there, man. So any other final questions, anything I'm missing? Um, let's go back through there, Jeff. 
Have you seen anything, Jeff? Am I, are we good? Are we caught up? See if we're good. All right, cool. Just hit me get, up when you're in Vegas so I can get my ice cream. I will get you that ice cream cone. <laughs> I don't. I don't need excuses to to find a way to eat ice cream. So, um, um, awesome, awesome guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the call. Um, so. Just like last week, just like every week, let's do the actions that are necessary for us to create wins that we can share next week. Um, not Obviously not for the purpose of sharing them, but for the purpose of, of moving our business forward, for moving our life forward. So um, thank you guys. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have in the group. Look for this big update that's coming out. So uh, for the Americans, when you guys wake up tomorrow or if you stay up late tonight, you're going to see that the, um, the contacts module, it's going to be within the, the leads uh, within the leads module. That's where it's going to be, the contacts um, item there. So it's going to have a lot. It's going to kind of be the um, the brain that connects a lot of different parts of lead generated moving forward. So really big update that we've been working on for a long time. And um, hopefully you guys are going to like it. So you guys have a great week and we will see you in the group. Thanks a lot. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Patrick. See ya. All right. Thanks.